G'day guys, on this week's episode we're going to be doing a short entry LDV T60 install. Today we're going to be fitting one of our day one variants, however this is also available in a fabulous fab variant as well. Let's get into it. So we're going to start off with taping up the guard, but before we do that I'm just going to give you a brief rundown on the tools that we need. Same as every other week guys, drill, screw gun, air hacksaw, die grinder with a spiral bend on it and the nut cert gun. These tools cover pretty much every install that we ever have to do. And if you scroll back through our YouTube, you'll also see an episode where we went to Trade Tools and bought some of these items that you can buy yourself for less than $250. So now that we've got the car taped up, we're just going to pop the bonnets, that way we can start measuring out the template. So guys, to measure out the template, it's the same as what we always do. Start from the back of the guard, measure forward in two points, down in two points, and that way it'll give you a front and a rear reference point. So that way we know that if these are lined up, everything's perfect, and if they're not lined up, then you don't cut the hole in the guard. So all the measurements will be written down in your instructions, which every kit comes with. All right, so once you've got the measurements and the template on the guard, we use a couple of magnets just to hold it into position. That way you can trace around it and sort of push it and contour it to the panel so that way you know that you're cutting the template out correctly. And then once we've got the template marked out, you'll also have a bottom of bracket measurement. So you put this on the pillar and then that way when you slide the snorkel into the hole, you reference that measurement to the bracket on the snorkel and that way it'll be in the perfect position. So one thing you might notice differently to what we usually do is that the bracket will be mounted on the outside of the pillar in the LDV. Now the reason for this is inside the door frame, we usually have a heap of room where we can put a nut cert and a bracket, but with the LDVs they don't have it, so we had no other choice but to mount it on the outside. So now that we've got the template marked out, cars taped up, we'll start pulling apart the engine bay and we'll get the inner guard out as well. So when we pull the inner guard out, we generally only take or pop the front three quarters of it down and leave the back. You can take the whole guard out if you want for more room, but it's just a bit of unnecessary time spent. So there's a whole bunch of screw clips to take out, a little screwdriver and a pick tool just to try and pry them out, a couple of clips under the front and then the whole guard will pop down. So now that you've got the inner guard out, it's time to pull the air box out. Just make sure that once you've removed it, you use a Chobani cup or similar to block up the intake point so that way you don't risk getting any metal in your engine while you're cutting the hole in the guard. Chobani. Alrighty, so now that we've pulled the airbox out, we've just got to remove like a little factory intake pipe, so that way we get access to get the snorkel in the guard. Two 10mm bolts inside the engine bay. You need a small, uh, as short as ratchet as possible just to get in the back up behind the coolant overflow bottle. So after you pull the airbox out, the only other thing that you have to remove is this factory intake pipe. Now it sits in the car like that. There's a 10mm nut on the front, undo that one. The 10mm nut at the back we usually leave on because it's a real pain in the ass to get to. So once you've got the front off, pop that out and then slide that up and this will come out. So next step is to cut the hole in the guard. I'm gonna start by drilling a big hole at the back with the step drill. So we use the step drill at the back because we make the hole at the back quite big. That way when your air hacks are up to it, you don't have to try and come around the corner with the air hacksaw, they don't really like doing that. 
and this is much safer than using a hole saw. It's a step drill at the back, starting point at the front, and then we can cut the hole. you've got the hole cut, grab your spire bend and clean it up. You can see here that there's a couple of jagged edges. Given you're putting a tube snorkel through the hole, you want that hole to be as smooth as possible. We've cut, we've deburred, we're gonna give it a quick air blow down and then we're gonna put the pinch weld on and test fit the snorkel. So when you put the pinch weld on the guard, it is directional. Um, if you put it on one way, it'll bite in. If you put it on the other way, it'll sit up. We always put it on biting in, gives you a much cleaner finish. And I always put the pinch weld join where you won't see it and always at the bottom. So that way, any water that sits on the guard is not gonna sit in the joint of the pinch weld, it'll just run out. So we know we're not gonna see it there. We'll start there, work our way around the guard. And then when we come back around, we'll leave a little bit left past it before we cut it off. Come past it about five to six millimeters. And chop it off. So that way you can push the end in and then push it down. And that way it makes that join almost seamless. Much like our snorkels. <laughs> All right. So now that we've got the pinch weld done, it's time to test fit the snorkel. Before we test fit this, I wanted to give you a look at what this customer has opted for. So as I said earlier, this is a day one variant, which has the seamed weld joint still shown. But what he's also opted for is to have a colored end cap. Now the color we've used on the end cap is Dormant Bomber Orange, and that's a color that's available from Oxytech in Sydney. So what this color is, is it's a two part process. You put the color down first and then you bake it off and then you clear the color and bake it off again and that activates the pearl in the color and brings it to life. You'll also notice that we've put black inside the end of the snorkel to that way, that way it really makes the day one pop. And as you can see, it is almost an identical match to the orange of the vehicle. So if you jump on the Oxytech website and have a look, there is a huge range of dormant colors in all different pearls, greens, blues, yellows. And generally we can get something that's very, very close to matching the color of your car. Let's chuck it in the hole. We've got the snorkel in the hole, double check that it lines up with the bottom of bracket measurement. We're gonna mark the pillar holes and then go ahead and drill them and nut set them. So an important thing to note here guys is that when you do mark the hole for the nut set, that it is no more than 10 mil from this edge of the windscreen back to the center of the hole. Once you've drilled the hole, give it a slight counter sink. So that way when you fit the nut sets, they sit flush with the panel.
So it's very important when you're installing the nut sets on the outside of the pillar that you stay as firm and fixed as possible. If you let this wobble around too much, you can end up denting the pillar. So it's important just to keep a nice firm pressure on it, keep it nice and square while you're doing the nut set up. And now that we've got the nut certs in, we've checked that the hole's good. I'm gonna go ahead, paint the hole with some rust proof paint and give the car a really, really thorough blow down with compressed air. One thing you probably will notice that when we were drilling the hole that metal filings went absolutely everywhere. Now, if you don't have access to compressed air or if you are concerned about this, it wouldn't hurt to put a piece of cardboard or something on the windscreen. Just protect the area as much as possible to eliminate the chance of any metal filings ending up anywhere that you can't then get them out of. All right, so the next step is to put the airbox back in, slide the interconnecting pipe in, and we'll chuck the snorkel in the hole for the last time. So the last thing to do before fitting the snorkel is to apply the rubber gasket to the bottom of the bracket. So I'm sure you're probably wondering what we do to seal it up. Basically, we're just gonna put a couple of daubs of Sally's roof and gutter on the bottom of the gasket. So that way we'll stick it to the snorkel and then the, we'll just hold it in position while we place it on the car. Now the rubber gasket will seal to the pillar, stop any water and stuff from getting underneath it. So that way you don't have to be worried about any water ending up in your pillar, any rust. And now this is something that we've only recently started adding into our LDV kits. So if you do have one of our pre-existing kits and you want one, just get in contact with us and we can send you one out for free. So when you put the snorkel into the interconnecting piece, one thing to do to make that way easier is to have the interconnecting piece almost pointing down slightly. So that way you slide the snorkel into the top of the silicon and you can then push the bottom of it up, which will let it pop in around the bottom of the silicon joiner. If you try and force it straight in, it can be really hard work. So yeah, definitely easier just to put it in at the top, work your way around the bottom and sort of push the snorkel down and into the silicon. And because I was really prepared, I'm gonna get Zach to pass me the bolts for the pillar, please, mate. Oh, sorry. There should be some countersunk bolts there somewhere, hopefully. The, yeah, in between the nut cert gun there. Yep. Uh, I'll give you that one back. And the one in the middle of the handle. Thanks, mate. So now that we've got them started, a few threads to hold it in position, we'll use some tools to do it up. I'd probably recommend using an Allen key here because the bracket is overfolded. If you come straight down with the normal screw gun situation, it can touch the side of the snorkel and risk rubbing the powder coat off. So an Allen key is a much better option. So that way you don't take any powder off the snorkel. So now we've got the snorkel fully tightened. It's time to finish tightening up all the hose clamps in the inner guard. So we'll have one left here to do, one in the engine bay, final blowdown, and then we can start refitting the inner guard.
guys. That's our day one LDV T60 in snorkel install, brought to you by a couple of dogs. <laughs> hey, couple of dogs installing a snorkel. All right, now we've got the air box in, in a guardian, blown off, everything's done. The last step to do, give it a quick polish just to get all the handprints off. Shut the bonnet and that's it. You're ready to enjoy your LDV T60 snorkel. Now, like I said, this one was the day one variant with the custom colored end cap. It's also available in our Fabulous Fab variant, which is a fully seamless finish. Uh, gloss black, matte black, satin black, or Mannix. If you're interested in getting one for yours, contact some of our staff or jump on our website and everything is available there.